we're on, um, similar, we're on page 115. Um, no, 100, yes, 115. Simon Tov, Kuf, Pei, Vos, If, Base. That's the top line, Sif, Base. Okay. We're going to read now a few Sif, and we're just going to read the Shulchan at the top, okay? Because they're less relevant halachas. Okay, so we'll just read the Shulchan at the top. Sif, Base. Hagoizel Shofar Vatokabo. Someone who steals a Shofar and blows it. Yotza, Afilu Luni Saishwa Bailim Mimena. So he's, he's a Yotza, he's fulfilled his obligation, even if the owners have not given up hope of getting their chauffeur back. He hasn't been Yotza blowing the chauffeur. He has been or he, he has, has not? He has, yes. Even though it was incorrect to steal it, um, he has fulfilled the mitz. Sif Gim, carrying on with the Shofna. Tokaba Shofar Shalavodes Kechovin. Someone who blows a chauffeur. Um, which which is a which is a which has been used as an idol. The shofar itself has been used as an idol. Shedi and belongs to Jew. Lo yotza, he is not fulfilled his obligation. Sheino betelo oylomis the katuzen mechtis shiurei because if a Jew uses an item as an idol, and um, it forever has this halacha of of, of being an, 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 an it's, it's forever defined as an idol, and it's as if it has to be but it has to be destroyed, and therefore it's as if it's not there. It means it hasn't got a, any substance to it. And therefore, it's as if you're not bringing a shofar. However, if this shofar, which is being used um, as, a, as an idol, belonged to uh, a non-Jew, then even though one should not blow it, if one blew it, um, he is... Yotza, and talk about Yotza. Who shall learn his covenant? Because as long as he didn't intend to acquire it himself, so it didn't become a Jewish item. It was just a non-Jewish item. I will imnis kaven this case, but lo yotza. To have the avodas kuchov and shali sal. If he intended to acquire it when he blew when he blew the shofar, then it becomes the idol of a Jew, and then he's not does not fulfill his obligation by playing such a shofar. Turn over the page now to one one six. Wait a second. So, if it's used an idol by a non-Jew, yes. and the Jew buys it, not as an idol but as a shofar, it's still considered a puzzle. If he blows, if he buys it, not as an idol. Yeah. It sounds like if it was used as an idol and he acquires it. Yes. Then, then, then it's, it's, it's yeah. forbidden. Correct. Yes. 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 Um, on the top of the next page, um, the Ramor brings down an opinion that even the non Jewish owned idol, also, um, if he blew it as a shofar, um, he cannot be Yotzer with it. He can, he's not, does not fulfill his obligation by being such a shofar. Unless the Goy annulled it before Yontif. He said, the Goy said, the non said before Yontif that he's not anymore going to use it as an idol and he annulled it. Okay, we'll move on. This is not so relevant. Um, Sif, Sif Dalet. Next, Shulchanah. Shofar shall take Kroivis Avodis Kichavim. The Shofar which was used as, not as an idol itself, but used as a, as a sacrifice. The, go, the, the, the Goy brought it as a sacrifice to his idol. This, even if it's owned by a non-Jew, it cannot be is used. It does not fill his obligation because um, <coughs> it can never be annulled. It's, it always retains the status as uh, a sacrifice used for an idol and may not be used um, to blow the shofar. Um, so this is if the animal was used as a sacrifice. This is if that that has either, the either the whole animal or just the shofar. Okay. Could be they offered the shofar as a sacrifice. This is not so relevant. The only, the only modern case example of a shaila of this kind was with the, the wigs, the shaitan, mm-hmm. when they discovered that the, right. the hair was coming from Indian women who were, who were giving it as a present to the, to the, to the whatever it was, the Buddhist. Buyer. Uh, hmm? Buyer. Yeah. This is a bridge thing. No, they were giving it as a, as a, a, a sacrifice to the, to the Abu Zora, the, the, the they're Hindu gods. They were offering up their hair. They're giving their hair to the Hindu gods as a sacrifice, and then the Hindu priests, whatever they're called, were then selling it on. 
So the question is, if it had, a, if it had this halacha of, of being used as a sacrifice for yeah. an Avedah Zohar, because it, the, the women were giving it as a present to the idol. So that was the, that's the only modern day shadow we've had as a, of, a, of this kind. Tikroi but it hasn't, hasn't turned up in the shofar world yet, <laughs> this shayla. Um Let's continue. So if hey, so if hey, Hamudu um, not on the Someone who made a vow that he's not going to have any benefit from the shofar. Odom acher tokei Someone else may blow the shofar. So if Ruvain made a vow that he's not having any benefit from the shofar, if Shimon blew the shofar, then Ruvain, who heard it, is Yotzer. Isn't getting a mitzvah hanah? Back to the Yotzer, isn't that a type of hanah? So we say mitzvah lav lehonish mitne, that having a hanah from a mitzvah is not considered having a benefit, because you don't get any physical benefit from it. It's a spiritual benefit, which is not defined as a, as a hanah. So that's okay. Avalim omar koinom litki osoi olai, but if he said that um, he's that um, he didn't he didn't mention that he's not going to have benefit from the shofar, but he said that um, he's not going he doesn't want to have um, that the, the sound of the shofar to him should be forbidden. If he said the sound of the shofar should be forbidden, then um, then he's not then then he does not fill his obligation, even if someone else blew it. So if he if he prohibited the actual shofar, then it's okay. But if he if he prohibited the sound of the shofar, then it's then it's problematic. Then it would be in the getter of a mitzvah ba'avera. Not mitzvah mitzvah ba'avera was 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 the, the the first case we saw where he stole the shofar. That's the case of can mitzvah ba'avera. Can you make a vow that matzah is forbidden to me on Pesach? Yeah, you could make it. Um, yes, but that, 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 that gets, into, gets into a very complicated issue of um, of if you're allowed to. Um, one second, if you can forbid matzah on yourself on the first um, day of Pesach. If one forbids matzah on oneself, yeah, one could forbid matzah. One could forbid matzah. He's, then he's got a problem because then he can't do the mitzvah. It depends exactly on, with all these things that are very complicated, you have to see exactly what the wording to is. Do the right, you have to, with all these cases, you have to see exactly what the wording is. It's very complicated. In certain cases, vows can't fall on certain items. If, if, if yeah, but it, it depends exactly on the wording. You can't make a shvur. He can't make a, a shvur, an oath, that he's not going to do a mitzvah. That he can't do. He can't make an oath that he's not going to do, do something that the Torah tells him not to do. But a vow not to have benefit from a certain item, which means that he's going to find it difficult to do the Torah command, that would that would that would work. But then he'd have, have problems afterwards with the fact that he can't do the mitzvah. So, uh, my question is: the Torah tells us that it's God's will mm-hmm. that you should hear the shofar at a certain time. Right. You can make a vow that, in spite of the fact that it's God's will, it's my will not to. That's what that. That, 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 that wording is a, is a shavuot, an oath, which would not work. The idea of, of a nadir, a vow, is that you take an article and you prohibit the article on yourself. You're not going to have any benefit from that article. Right. So that's not, um, that's not, good, that's, that's not saying you're doing the complete opposite of what the Torah said. I told, told, told you that you have to. Um, eat matzah on Pesach. You didn't make a vow that you're not going to. But your problem is that you can't eat matzah because you've um, prohibited all matzah upon yourself in a vow. So you couldn't pro- you couldn't specifically prohibit it for Ere Pesach. You could prohibit matzah. You period. couldn't prohibit the eating. You couldn't right. prohibit yourself from eating matzah on Pesach. Right. If you if you prohibited the action of eating matzah, that would be more problematic than if you're. Um, to, if you're if you're um, um, prohibiting the article, of, uh, that. there's two. There's the act of eating, and there's the actual matzah, which is the item that's being eaten. So we're talking about the. In this case, we're talking about the act of hearing. Right. right. So there is no. You wouldn't be able to make a. You wouldn't be able to make an, a, a, a shavuot, an oath that you're not going to hear the show for Omar Shazam. That that wouldn't that wouldn't work. Okay. There's no way. Right. Right. Okay. That's 
And that's what, if you want to see that inside, that's on the bottom line of page 116. In? The bottom line of page one, oh, um, sorry, to you. sorry, no, sorry, in, in the Mishabura, sorry, yeah, I'm talking about the bottom line of the Mishabura. So it's the Mishabura, um, Sif Cotton Kaf Dalid. Um, with me it's the bottom line of the page here, I don't know if you have the same page numbers. Um, the page we were just reading, the page yeah, that we just okay. finished I'll reading. Um, yeah, that's right, but if we read the bottom line there, it says, Umafurish Bafoskim. Yeah, starts the line before. Mufurish Bavoskim. Not the bottom line. Mufurish Bavoskim. Tchol All this is with a vow, avobishva, with an oath. Einu yochol avkir es atzmei mitzvah tkashiva. He could not um, um, t- um, 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 uh, take it and be mafkir. How do you say mafkir? Um, remove himself. Remove. Yeah. Remove from himself the mitzvah of tkashiva. The mushpa v'omid masinai. He, had, there's a, he has a shvur that he made an Ayasinai, Lekai Mitzvah Satorot, that he's going to fulfill the commands of the Torah. And therefore he cannot now make a shvur and oath saying that he's not going to do the commands right. of the Torah. So it's all to do with the wording. If he's forbidding the, the, the actual act that he's um, obligated to do, that doesn't work because he has to do the act. However, he can cause himself problems by forbidding that various items which are necessary for the act. Right, so forbidding the shofar is more problematic than uh, forbidding the act of blowing the shofar, which would not work. Okay. Thank you. And let's continue. So if vav, um, <coughs> so if vav, one more if, and then we'll move on, and then we'll stop. I mean, so if vav, and the next verse. Hayo koylo av ma'oid, oidak ma'oid, kosher. So kol akoylos k'sherim ba'shofar. If the sound of the shofar was very thick or very fine, then it's kosher. Then he's then it's fine because all sounds that come out of the shofar are okay. And says the Mishpurus of Cotton Cafe, which is around the eighth line, Dak Ma'od, who had in the Yohan Mahoya Tzorid V'yavish, so too if it was a dry or hoarse sound. Any sound that comes out of the shape, as long as it was blown, whatever sound comes out, um, it's okay. Right? That one is quite relevant, because occasionally there are <laughs> misfire and malfunction. Um, that's of course not the reason, that's not the Baltakir's fault. But it's all okay as long as the sound comes out.